afternoon. Right. Uh, didn't really get a chance to do a video last night, but I did watch the fight uh, between Paul Butler and Zelani Tete, uh, obviously for the uh, IBF Flyweight Championship. Now, in my uh, pre-fight video, I kind of said that I would expect Butler to start fast in this fight and get in behind Tete's jab and really let the combos fly without really having any effect power-wise on Tete, but to really outbox him um, and then maybe struggle in the later rounds. And I did predict that Tete would probably stop him in the later rounds or take it on points uh, and just thinking that he would be too strong. Well, it didn't exactly work out to the way that I thought it would because, let's be honest, it was really hard to score even a single round for Paul Butler. Um, I'm not sure. It's hard to say whether like, I think he boxed badly or had a bad game plan or whether it literally was just that the, the jab from Tete uh, backed up with that left hand was just too dangerous and too accurate for Paul Butler to get past. I mean, that, that jab, I've never, I haven't seen a, a fight for quite a while where I've seen someone's jab land on such a consistent basis. Um, and what I mean by that is I know a lot of them were hitting gloves but they were still getting through the gloves and they were still getting partial hit. You know, like, it just seemed to me that Paul Butler just didn't know where to move his head to get out of the way. He just he just couldn't get underneath. And the one time he did, or well, the few times that he did in, like, rounds five, six, and seven, when he did start to have more success, the problem was he was, he was taking monstrous punches by walking in. Um, you know, he took a lot of hard hits that maybe would have knocked some, some down, but... Ultimately, that, that, that left hand from Tete, he had been lining that up since about round five. He tried to throw it on a couple of occasions and he missed narrowly. But the way he set it up with just a little right hand feint, Butler's expecting a jab and then whoop, straight with the upper. I mean, that, that was a tremendous shot. It was a brilliant finish and you've got to give Tete all the credit in the world. Just the way he set the shot up and then just to land it clean on the button as well. I mean, I, 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 I was surprised Butler even got up. I mean, when, it, when I saw him go down, I thought, he's out. He's out for the count. But, you know, he got back on his legs. The referee rightly waved it off. You know, Paul Butler was in no condition to continue. Um, the referee, there were no qualms about that decision. Um, but I, I just I just didn't expect such such a clean, sweet performance from Tete. I didn't expect him to be that good. I did expect him to be a tough challenge. We know he's well-travelled. We know he's won some good, hard fights on the road. Uh, we know he's lost before, but those defeats were kind of in, you know, not dodgy situations, but you no know, two of them were splits, and then the other one was like a world title fight, like four weeks notice or something like that. He didn't have a trainer, uh, and he just quit on his stool. But he's a, he looks a class little fighter, you know. And Paul Butler just looked looked doomed from about round two or three when it was obvious that he just couldn't do anything to get past the jab, and when he would, he was just taking big shots. Um. I don't think Paul Butler's a bad fighter at all, and I think he can recover from this. You know, you know, fighting fighting games are learning curve at the best of times. He's only 26 years old. His first career defeat. He is a former world champion, of course, uh, although be at a higher weight class, and gave up his belt straight away after defeating Stewie Hall. Um, so he's he's still got a lot to work on. He's, he's still got a lot of time, and he's still got a big future in the game. I think, um, and I would expect him to see back in action soon uh, with maybe like a world level opponent. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say like another world title challenge or like a, an eliminator or anything like that just yet. But like, you know, a solid, a solid top twenty opponent uh, just to get him back in the mix. Maybe put some, get some like little bull crap title, like an intercontinental title or something like that on the line. Um, and then that, that will, that will probably see him through uh, with a lot to work on in the future. As for Tete, you know, he's certainly a big lad for the weight. Um, needless to say, I think he'll be moving up in weight soon. I can't see him uh, staying up, staying in that weight for very long. Um, and with a jab like that, you know, I don't think he's the greatest gifted technical boxer in the world, but he has got a fantastic jab, um, and he's got a mean, mean punch. So maybe he can go places. I'll be, I'll be keeping an eye on Tete. I'll be looking. I'm interested to see where he fights next and what title he's for. I know he says he wants to stay at the weight in the interview last night. He says he wants to stay at the weight, uh, defend his title back in South Africa, and then go on to unify. But I think he'll outgrow the, outgrow the weight before that happens. Um, anyway, let me know what you guys think. If you watched the fight last night, uh, give me your reaction. Um, especially if you were surprised as me to see how dominant Tete was. Or maybe you thought Tete would be dominant from the start. You know, let me know either way. Thanks for watching.